In this video, I'm going to explain what data structures are in Grasshopper and how you can use them to supercharge your designs. To follow along, you can download the template files from the link below. So, what are data structures? Data structures are essentially methods of organizing data and information as it passes through an algorithm. So Grasshopper has three distinct types of data structures. There's single items, which are singular pieces of data on a singular branch inside Grasshopper. And these could be any data type, ranging from numbers to points to meshes. We could use two single items, such as a point and a number, to pass along data to a circle component in Grasshopper. These are represented by a single line wire display. The second type is lists of items, which are multiple items on a singular branch. We could use two lists, such as a list of points and a list of numbers, to pass along data to a circle component in Grasshopper, which will output us a list of circles. These are represented by a double line wire display. And the third is trees of items, which are in simple terms a collection of lists within lists. We call these groups of lists branches. Trees can contain multiple branches with any number of items on each branch. We could use two trees, such as a tree of points and a tree of numbers, to pass along data to a circle component in Grasshopper, which will output us a tree of circles. These are represented by a double dashed line wire display. Let's try and unpack this a little further with an analogy. Imagine we're at a party with a group of people meeting each other for the very first time. We can call this our Grasshopper party. This is Mark. Mark is a student at a global university with campuses all around the world. He is studying architecture and he's attended our Grasshopper party. Mark could be thought of as an item of data. Mark and his friends who study architecture with him have also come to the party. They could be thought of as a branch within a larger data tree. There are also other people from Mark's university at the party that are studying something different. There might be a group of friends who are studying product design and another group who are studying engineering. These students are all from the same university. Let's call this group University One. At the party, we might have other groups of friends studying similar degrees, but they might be from other universities called University Two and University Three. These would be their own branches in our data tree. And this would mean that each university would be a sub-branch of the larger Grasshopper party. So our party could be thought of as a large data tree with branches that define the universities people attend and sub-branches that define the different degrees they're studying. So how would we locate Mark at our Grasshopper party? Data trees have a notation that allows us to find items of data. The notation creates addresses called paths that are given to each branch that look like a series of numbers with curly brackets. So what do these numbers mean? You may have noticed that our diagram on the right nests branches within each other. The party is at the top level and has the universities nested within it, and within these universities, the degrees each person is studying are nested. This creates levels of information, and Grasshopper notations work from left to right. The number on the far left could be thought of as the main branch. The next number would be thought of as a sub-branch of the main and the next number would be thought of as a sub-branch of this sub-branch, and so on. You might have data trees with only one branch level, but in more complex situations you may have as many as five. So let's try and apply these notations to our Grasshopper party. The Grasshopper party is the main branch and there's only one of these, so we'd give it the notation zero. The universities are on the next branch, so we'll notate a zero first to signify they live on the branch of the Grasshopper party, then start at zero for Uni 1, 1 for Uni 2, and 2 for Uni 3 to define each separately. And for each of the different degrees, we would notate with a zero for the Grasshopper party they are nested within, zero if they are located at Uni 1, and then starting at zero for our architecture students and counting up for each subsequent degree type. To locate a specific person at the party, we would need to add indexes to each person, and then our path notation for a specific person would be their index with an enclosed square bracket. Let's move back into Grasshopper and look at this in practice with a simple Grasshopper algorithm. To follow along, you can download the template files from the link below. 
I have three curves referenced into a curve container, which are then connected to a perp frames component, which divides my curves into a list of frames. I've then created circles at each of these frames, and we can see from our dash connection line that we have a data tree. Like lists, we can use panels and the parameter viewer to evaluate the structure of our data tree, which I've set up here on the right. I'm going to plug my circle component into this curve container so we can pass this data tree over to our panel and parameter viewer. And this starts to allow us to create a visual connection between our data in Grasshopper and our geometry previewed in Rhino. One thing you'll immediately notice if you're using Rhino 8 is that we have little text bubbles that appear in our Rhino viewport. These are our path notations and they are being previewed by our parameter viewer component. You'll see if I preview the parameter viewer off, they'll disappear. We're also able to right click on our parameter viewer component and view this visually as a tree. Let's preview it back on and look at our parameter viewer for some more information about the structure of our data tree. We have a data tree with one main branch and three sub branches and 11 items on each sub branch. And if we look at our panel, we can see information about the specific items contained within our data tree. We can see the branch path in the top right of each heading on our panel. Below this, we can see the type of data that is located at an index on a specific branch. So now that we have this information, what does it all mean? By looking at the path notation in the parameter viewer, we can see that the resulting data tree has two levels. The first level is like our grasshopper party, it just has a notation of zero on each branch. The second is representative to our three curves from our initial input. At this level, we have three branches, so it's our curves that are organizing our data structure. And we can see this notation directly in our Rhino viewport thanks to our parameter viewer component. So our data structure has organized our lists of circles so they are on the branch of their parent curve. This structure makes it easy in Grasshopper to create a relationship between what we see in Rhino as a preview and what we see in Grasshopper as data. So why does any of this organization matter? We can explain this simply by creating a loft component, which will attempt to create a surface through our circles. And if we plug this in, we now have three circular lofts. The branches in our data structure have organized our data so that the loft component stops at the end of each branch and also ensure the curves are lofted in order, which creates a new loft for each branch. Without this structure in place, the loft container would try to create one singular surface through all the points randomly. So this is quite a basic data tree. Let's delete our loft and plug our circles into this divide curve component to divide our circles into evenly spaced points. So in our Rhino viewport, we can see that our three original curves have been divided into 11 planes, which now have a circle at each location, and this circle has also been divided up into 11 points. By looking at path notation in the parameter viewer, we can see that the resulting data tree now has three levels. The first level remains the same, with a notation of zero on each branch. The second, which counts up from 0 to 2, has three branches that represent our three curves from our initial input list. And the third, which counts up from 0 to 10, has 11 branches that represent each of the circles we created on the planes we divided our initial curves into. This is then repeated for each of the three curve branches because this level is nested within the previous levels. So as an example, let's decode the path notation 0, 2, 6. The 0 is the first level because it relates to the overall data tree. We can ignore this because it isn't increasing in value. The 2 is on the second level, which relates to the third of our input curves because remember, Grasshopper begins counting from 0. And the 6 is on the third level, which relates to the seventh circle location of our third input curve. If we preview our parameter viewer on, we can locate this path at this collection of points here in our Rhino viewport. And we can easily draw this as a diagram like our grasshopper party, which better shows us how points are organized on branches that relate to their circles, which are sub-branches to the branches that represent our initial curves, which are sub-branches for the entire algorithm. 
This video is part of a longer data structures in Grasshopper course available on thedifferentdesign.com. So if you want to keep learning, sign up for an account with us today.